Hi everyone, welcome to the Deep Sea Journey podcast, where you will learn from experts like surgeons, patients, and healthcare providers who will present you with education and resources to empower you to make an informed decision about options for breast reconstruction surgery after mastectomy. I am your host, Terry Kuti. Listeners, I have to tell you, I'm super, super stoked that you are back today. I am so excited about today's episode because today we are going to be discussing innovations in breast reconstruction, specifically nipple reconstruction graphs. So I hope you will download this episode because if you were like me, I poured over this information and I was hungry to learn more. You may want to replay it over again, at least once. I feel really, I feel beyond lucky to have been connected to these innovators today. My guests today are a plastic surgeon who will tell us why patients may lose or choose to lose their nipple areola complex during breast surgery. So for the sake of conversation today, we may be referring to this as the NAC, the nipple areola complex, just for the listeners. My other guest is Billy Hine. He's the chief operating officer of Bioaesthetics. Bioaesthetics was founded to improve patients' lives through tissue engineering. So, Billy, you guys had me at improve patients' lives. I got to tell you. Billy has immersed himself in biotech startups since completing his MBA at Tulane University in 2012. He earned his Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Engineering at Tulane University and his Master's in Science in Mechanical Engineering at Georgia Institute of Technology. So let me introduce my first guest, none other than the three-time returning Deep Sea Journey podcast guest, Dr. Minas Chrysopolo. I think he's going for a record. (laughs) No big surprise, Dr. C is a record setter. He is the president of PRMA, Plastic Reconstructive Microsurgical Associates, in San Antonio, Texas. His practice has performed over, okay, are you ready for this number? 9,500 flap procedures to date. It's using a patient's own tissue to reconstruct breast when affected by breast cancer. Now, full disclosure, I chose Dr. C as my reconstructive plastic surgeon and have never looked back. I'm one of the thousands of lives he has changed in positive, unexpected ways after loss of breasts due to breast cancer. Dr. C is also the developer of the Breast Advocate app, the first shared decision-making app, one of my favorite words, for breast cancer surgery and breast reconstruction. But wait, there's more. Breast Advocate app was the flagship app. And now there is Toleman Health, a digital health company. Whether you are a medical practice, a specialist center, hospital, other healthcare facility, or advocacy organization, Toleman offers customization of its proven proprietary shared decision-making technology for use in any medical specialty. I will have all the information and the innovation links for both Bioaesthetics and Dr. C's apps and practice information in the show notes. Dr. C, Toleman is actually a star, correct? Yes, a very bright star. A very bright star in a constellation. Folks use stars to navigate their journey. You have been that guiding star for me, even after you reconstructed my breast. Your passion to educate, it aligns with my background in education. And honestly, 
it guides my work daily in ways I never would have imagined. It is how I met Billy and his partner, Nick. We did a clubhouse recently on the breast reconstruction room and Billy's partner, Nick, popped in. You invited him to the stage and his conversation absolutely captivated me. The next course of action, as you often do, was to make a connection. I had such a delightful conversation with Nick and Billy that we decided to do this podcast together. So here we all are, Dr. C, Billy, and myself. So, Dr. C, three times uh-huh. you have found your way back to the Deep Sea Journey podcast. Way to go on setting another record. Come on, get rid of me. Get rid of you, did you say? <laughs> I'm honored, Terry. <laughs> you know, I, I can't fire you. I can't get rid of you. I like to tease you, but honest to God, you have been a true mentor and inspiration to me. So I'm I'm just grateful you came back. I really appreciate that too. Yeah. I appreciate that a lot. My wife says similar things, at least the first part. <laughs> can't get rid of you. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can have a chat with her, you know. No, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's a sweetheart. So let's jump right in here to the conversation today because I'm I'm just so excited to talk about this product. This I'm going to call it an innovation because to me in my mind that's where I keep going with defining this. Why don't you begin by by telling us you know in the breast cancer and breast surgery setting. And explaining to us why a woman would choose or would lose nipple and the areola complex during breast surgery. You're the best person to talk to us about that. Well, a lot depends on the specific diagnosis. If it's a cancer diagnosis, the location of the tumor, type of tumor, lots of factors go into it from a medical standpoint. If you save the nipple and the areola complex at the time of a mastectomy, which is what we're talking about, it's primarily at the time of mastectomy. If you save the nipple and areola complex, there are lots of benefits to it. So number one, you preserve everything on the outside, everything that you can see in the mirror, the patient's skin, the nipple and the areola. If you can preserve that entire external envelope, as we call it, then you're more likely to have a more natural and cosmetically appealing result. A lot of women feel that the nipple and the areola complex defines their breast. Some women couldn't care less about their nipple and the areola. Uh, It really is a very broad spectrum. And it's a very personal choice, like many of the questions that we contemplate when it comes to breast cancer, or rather the patients contemplate when it comes to breast cancer decision making. Lots lots of it's very, very personal indeed. But there are some benefits to saving the nipple and the areola. In addition to the cosmetic outcome, some studies have shown that uh, you have improved sensation returning if you can preserve the nipple and the areola. And one thing that's really important to discuss also is that, and this is a common misconception, if you save the nipple and the areola, it doesn't mean that you can breastfeed after a mastectomy and reconstruction, right? Because the mastectomy removes all the, or almost all the 